Praise the Lord. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. As you come on, come online, come online. It is our midweek recharge Bible study. Don't just come on, but come on and hit that share button and let your followers know that Living Grace Worship Cathedral is live on Facebook. We would love to have you join us and worship with us on tonight as we journey through the word of God. You know, this is the year of the new, and we've been in this series of this working on our newness, and we're re up, and we're asking God to just fill us and give us everything that we need and desire in this new year. So I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. I see you coming on, and we welcome you, and as you come on, send up some hearts and send up some thumbs and let us know that you are engaged and connected. Listen, as we get ready to journey through the word of God, I am excited um, to have a special couple that is connected to our ministry that's been with us, amen, before they became to us, amen, they were a part of us, they were one of our virtual worshiping couples, and we're delighted and excited to have the McDowell's Deacon and Deaconess McDowell, amen, tonight, prepare Amen. To say, what does say of the Lord? And so I reached out to them, and they had prepared and laid before God a teaching that will bless our soul. So I want to encourage you on tonight to text somebody, call somebody, share it out, tell them to get on so that we can be blessed tremendously. So I'm going to invite them up as they come up in their own way, but we're going to give God praise and glory for them. And then after the lesson, I'll be back to share some important information with you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for allowing me into your house one more time. Thank you, Lord. We're going to open up with prayer. Lord, you are the creator you, of Jesus. all things, yes, Lord. the author of our life. Yes, Lord. You are a loving Father. Glory. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for your faithful presence. Jesus. Oh, Father God, we love you, hallelujah. Yes, we thank you, Father, hallelujah, Jesus. for allowing us into your house of worship Jesus. one more time. Oh, Lord, we're here just to glorify and lift up your holy name, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word, Lord. As we prepare to study, Lord Jesus, yes. we ask, Lord, that you open up our minds, Lord. Clear all the clutter, Jesus. Lord, and give us a quiet space yes, to Lord. be with you, Father, so we can hear your word on tonight, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Father God, we ask that you provide Glory. insight and awareness yes, to us of your yes, word, Lord. Lord. Open up our minds, Lord, Lord, so we can have clear understanding, Lord. Open up yes, our hearts, God. Lord, to receive your word yes, on Lord. tonight, Lord. Oh, Father God, Glory. we know it is Glory. your will, hallelujah, Jesus. that we are on the line or whether we're Lord, here we in pray. person, Lord, yes, Lord to God. hear your word. You have yes, something for yes, us, Lord. Yes, we're here Lord. expecting, Lord, yes, God. expecting, Lord, yes, to be Lord. blessed, Lord Jesus, with Jesus. your word on tonight. Oh, Father God, Glory. we appreciate this opportunity. Yes, Oh, Thank Lord, you. to come into your house of worship yes, one God. more time. Yes, we give Lord. you glory. We give you honor. We don't Jesus. take this time for granted, Lord. Glory. Oh, Father God, we worship you. We thank you, and we lift Jesus. you up. We thank you for this day, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for allowing us, oh, hallelujah, to wake up on this morning, Lord. Glory. Oh, Father God, we give you glory. We give you yes, glory Lord. in the house on tonight. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Coming from a scripture, Romans 6, chapter 4, verse. Therefore, we are buried with him yes, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead yes, by Lord. the glory of the Father, even so Jesus. we also shall walk in the Ooh. newness of life. Yes, Lord. And I love the subject that we have for this year, the newness of life. Yes, Lord. Because to me, every day, hallelujah, yes, is Lord. new with the Lord. Because we have new mercies every day. Yes, Lord. The Spirit of God quickened me with this passage. Yes, Lord. As I went before him for a Glory. word. We shall also walk in the newness of life. 
understanding that we are a mm. new creation. Yes, Lord. That we no longer are under the law, but we are under grace. Yes, Lord. That the old life, the old life that we had yes, under Lord. Adam is no longer in control of our life. Yes, we Lord. are Christians and the sons of Abraham, yes, the Lord. body of Christ in the earth, Jesus. and should seek to walk in the newness of life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. I want to thank our bishop and Pastor Dawn for allowing us to come up and break the word of God with everyone tonight here in our sanctuary, on YouTube, on Facebook. Praise the Lord, everyone. We love you. And um, like my wife said, our church theme tonight this year is the year of a new. Why is it important for Christians to have new beginnings? New beginnings are important for Christians because each new beginning we are reminded of God's grace, mercy, and his forgiveness. Through his love, we are not lost and forsaken when we fail. In every moment, we are given the opportunity to begin again. It is amazing how God would take a sinner, just like me, and those who have done wrong against the kingdom, just like me, and forgive them and let them walk in the newness of life. This new life should be focused now, and God wants us to manifest this life in where we live. The new life in Christ comes to us as a result of Christ's death burial, the resurrection, we have come to the end of an old life under Adam. We no longer can keep the law of God. We have found out that we can't, we cannot be good, nor can we do good enough to please the Lord. So the new life we live now is by faith in Christ Jesus. Through him, we move, we have our beginning, only through him, through Christ, and through faith are we able to live the life that God would want us to have us to live. Thus, we express or give expressions to life of God in the earth. Let this go down unto your spirit. God wants you to live the new life in Christ now, not the old life under the law. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This becomes the focus of our lives now. We are not about keeping the law of God. Now God wants us to be just committed into walking in this newness of life. The new experience, this becomes our new experience. This becomes the life we live now, the life we have now, a new life. We enter the newness of life in Christ Jesus. All things, everything becomes new. Only the word and the spirit of God can open this life to us as we seek to live it by faith. Thus, what we call new life is really the life that Adam and Eve fell from. This is a life that God intended for us to live all the time. But because of disobedience, man fell to a carnal life, a worldly life, a life of sin and shame. But through Christ, but through Christ, we get the chance to live out God's will here in this earth. We get to be what he intended for us to be. We walk in the newness of life through Christ, through faith. Mankind, since Genesis, gets the opportunity to live out God's plan in creating them. We have the life that he wanted us and mankind to have from the beginning. We can live out God's purpose. Thus, we can fulfill God's will and God's plan. 
And I might add that this also brings the blessings back into the lives of all who believe and walk by faith in this new life. You not only get a new life, but you get empowerment. You could pray right. You could talk right. You could go into a sick room and lay hands on someone and ask the Lord to heal them. Use you as a golden vessel to do this. The blessing to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom of God here on earth. You will be blessed. Your seed will be blessed. And I like to talk about that blessed seed. The Bible says in Acts, if you receive the Holy Ghost, your seed will be blessed as far off as the Lord will call. And we need to remember that. That's why it's so important to get a new life so you can train your children up the way they won't depart. And that's a blessing right there to have blessed children. If you have any children in the church and working for the Lord, that's a blessing. And you could contribute you having a new life because they use you as an example. Your seed will be blessed to show forth the glory of God in the earth and to open the way for God to manifest on earth what is in heaven. If there's a question whether we're going to make it, be successful, overcome, prosper in our ways, then all questions are settled. You are in the kingdom of God now, and there's no defeats. For those who are in the kingdom of God are on the winning side. When we look at Revelations, it, it, it concludes what the life and the end of a Christian is going to be. That book right there, those verses relate to God opening up the book of life. If you're in that book of life, we have made it. we on the winning side. And that's the whole purpose of us trying to achieve a newness of life. There is only success for those who walk by faith and who walk in obedience to God and his word. For the life that comes into us, into our spirit, comes from the word of God. And that life is the word. And God's word never, ever, ever fails. It will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. Paul picks this up in Romans chapter 7 and 6 by writing, but, but now we are delivered from the law. That being dead wherein we are held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Don't y'all see it? We should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter, the law. We couldn't make it in the law. That's why Jesus had to come back, because we could not make it in the law. I praise God when that veil was ripped from the top to the bottom, because at that time when that happened, I could go to Jesus myself, petition prayer myself, Heal, ask for healing. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Galatians 3 and verse 24 and 27 opens us, <clears throat> opens, opens to us that the law was our schoolmaster to bring unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. And verse 25 says that, but after the faith has come, we no longer under we're no longer under the schoolmaster, under the law. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Here, here we gain another concept. <clears throat> we understand being in Christ by faith. Now it is revealed that we have put him on. We become his body. He becomes our life. Put the point now is that we serve God in the newness of spirit and not under the law. We are now in Christ by faith, not by the law. Most of us, most of all, we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And this is where Adam and Eve were before, before they fell down in a carnal life, a life of flesh, 
a life of sin. It is important for us to plant the seed, the word into our spirit. We want it to take root in us. People will see that we are standing on it and how we are living by faith and seek to walk in the same path that we're walking in. In Galatians 5 and 16, in chapter 5, 16, in 16 to 17 verse, it reads, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The, the flesh lusts after the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to another, so that ye may not do things that ye would. But if, you led, if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So, we are to walk in the Spirit. Those who walk by faith and walk in this newness of life in Christ Jesus learn to walk in the Spirit. Take the Word of God by faith and meditate it in the Word until it becomes the life in you. <clears throat> now, let me break this down. You cannot live the life that God wants you to live without the knowledge in the Word of God. The word of God has to be real in you. The word of God has to be in you and become life in you. This is what Adam and Eve lost because of their disobedience. The life of God, the word withdrew from them. They lived on, but they lived a carnal life, a worldly life, a life of sin separated from God and the life of, and, and the life of God. And that's a terrible position to be in where you're separated from God. And I think one of the most petrifying weapons that the enemy has is to have you believe that there is no God. He becomes, he used stealth technology. And anybody in that position is in a, in a, in a bad position. This was what was captured with Adam and Eve, why they failed and how horrible it was when they got separated from God. The new life, God life, <clears throat> is lived out by faith, by the word of God. The new life in you comes forth by the activation of your faith in God and Jesus Christ. Your faith in him, in the word, in you, brings forth the manifestation of the life of God here on earth. This is the same way we see prayers, prayers answered, healings, overcoming the enemies of our lives, and on and on and on. The life in the word, the seed, manifests the life of God in the believers of faith. We walk in the newness of life by walking in the spirit, in the word of God by faith. You have the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who will guide you and do all you could do. He guides you by the word through the spirit each and every day. Again, the word comes to life in you, the believer, by faith. That word comes alive in your spirit through faith. And you can say that the word of God will be life in you, all you do here on this earth. <clears throat> Thus, you are to be guided by the word or the life of God every day. Now this takes us to Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, it's a familiar scripture, I beseech you there now, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that that's a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that this is a good and acceptable, perfect will of God. I heard a young man come up here during the youth uh, Sunday. And he broke the word mind down, moving in a new direction. I don't know the brother's name, Bishop, but he broke that thing down and it just stuck in me. And like what we need to achieve when we're trying to get this newness of life, 
Our mind has to move in a new direction. We got to move from that carnality of this world. That's something that we have to do. We no longer are to conform to this world. We no longer are to be like this world. We are to conform to the kingdom of God. We are to take on the likeness of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We walk in the newness of life on this earth. Now the word of God orders our steps. And listen, as he is, as God is, so are we in this world. In 1 John chapter 4, 17, it says, we have been born again of God. We have, we have his spirit living in us now, the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. We have his word alive in us now. Through his word, he leads us and guides us and teaches us the ways of his kingdom. We are conformed to God's ways and not the ways of the world. Now, what is the key? The whole key to this whole thing, achieving this newness of life, is you have to repent. You have to repent. In the Greek, there's a Greek word for repent, and it means it's metanoia. You have to turn around. Your mind has to move in a new direction. In the army and stuff, when we're marching and stuff, and we want a unit to turn around, we tell them about face. That's the same thing as saints of God that we have to do with sin. We have to turn it around. We have to take our mind. Your mind is a spiritual battlefield. It's, it's, it's fighting. It's fighting a spiritual battle in your mind, good and evil. But you have to metanoia. You have to repent. You have to turn that thing around to achieve this newness of life. How do we get there? Here it is. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed. Your mind has to be renewed by the word of God. If you're going to walk in the newness of life, your mind has to return to the place where God had it in the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, there's no time with God. You have to have a new way of thinking. You have to have a new way of translating and processing the thoughts that come to you and that comes from you. Now, every thought comes through the word in the spirit of God. And, and you see everything in relationship to the word of God. You do all you do in relationship with or to the word of God by the spirit of God. Every challenge, every attack, spiritual warfare has to pass through the word. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Your successes, your overcomings, your victories, your hurts, your pain, all passes through the word of God, which cannot fail. He cannot fail, y'all. Everything, everything in this new life in Christ is governed by the word of God. You know, the devil couldn't even touch Job without going through God first. Huh? He couldn't even touch it. For the word puts you in harmony in union with God, in the kingdom of heaven. So we are called to walk in the newness of life in Christ, Jesus. Our lives change as we process the word into our born-again spirit. Now, how do we get the word into our spirits? Timothy, Solomon, and prophet Isaiah break all this down. In 2 Timothy, Chapter 2, verse 15, study to show you thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Solomon says that in 4 and 20, 23, my son, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes and keep the, and keep the midst in thine heart, for they are life unto you. Define them. In, in health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And Isaiah says, <clears throat> incline your ear and come unto me. Here your soul shall live, and I will make an, 
everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. This everlasting covenant, this is, this is what happened. This everlasting covenant, when we choose to accept a newness of life, this is the covenant that Jesus provided for us when he died and he got up off that cross. Amen. Do this and walk in the newness in the life of Christ. I'm reminded of the story of Jabez in Chronicles 4 and 19. Jabez had a life of destiny that was characterized with sorrow and pain, failure in all areas of life, and his lot from his childhood because his mother birthed him in sorrow. Not necessarily he was cursed, but he was birthed in sorrow. Jabez sought a new beginning. He cried unto the Lord in faith. <laughs> he cried to the Lord in faith for a new beginning. Yeah. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, if you're at home right now, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you could cry to the Lord and he'll change your life completely around right now. <clears throat> God heard Jabez and he answered him with a new beginning order of glory and honor. And everybody knows that prayer of Jabez, he asked the Lord, Lord, do this for me. And the Lord expanded his coast, his territory. He blessed Jabez that day. And Jabez, after that, became a man whose story became that of success and glory because he sought a new beginning from God, and he got it. He received it. And now tonight, I hope, some, I hope this uh, helps somebody tonight. Um, we come to the conclusion of it. Um, we are going to say a short prayer, and we're going to turn it back over to our bishop. But I want to, before we pray, I want everyone to keep those grieving families in their prayers tonight. The Nolan family, Kale, and the Goldsberg family, Mother Washington, Sister Green's family, and um, Marlene's Aunt Adley. Let's look towards the Lord. Father God, we come before you, Lord God, tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that this lesson, Lord God, will help somebody, Lord God, choose a newness of life, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that they turn their life around, Lord God, and choose you, Lord God, as their Lord and Savior. Repent from their sins, Lord. Repent, Lord God. Be baptized and receive your spirit, Father. Lord, we love you. We adore you, Lord God. And we praise God and we honor you on tonight, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise for that. Amen. Amen. Good job. To God be all the glory for the great things that he has done praise the lord you know i'm telling you there's a lot of takeaways from um the word that we heard on tonight from uh deaconess mcdowell as well as deacon mcdowell um that we have to have a change mind that change mind set and my key thing that really stuck out that what we're facing in these days and these times that we as the believers and even those that are in darkness, we must come to life. Amen. We got to come to life. We have to stand on the promises of God. We got to come alive in our word. We got to come alive in our devotion. We got to come alive in our prayer life. We got to come alive in our witness. The Bible reminds us that we must be set apart. We must come out from among them. And the problem is too many times we're starting to look like them and them not looking like us. And so when we come into that season and that time of repentance and being filled with the anointing and the Holy Ghost, we are set apart. And the Bible says to be in the world but not of the world. And so that they will identify, I see something different about you. I see change in your life. And that's what we have to continue to press on in the newness that means that I don't look like the old self. You may, I'm, you may want to remind me what I used to do, but I'm not who that person used to be. Amen. I'm a new man. I'm a new woman. I'm a new son. I'm a new daughter 
in the body of Christ. And so I tell you, I've been tremendously blessed on tonight with a powerful word that uplift and empowered and encourage us. And so as we are still in this series of the new throughout this year, I want to encourage those who are online and those that are here, walk in it. Amen. Walk in it. Believe that thing. Activate that thing. Apply it to your life. Lift up your heads, holy gates. Forever be lifted up that the king of glory shall come in our lives because we are new creature. Reset. We got to reset ourselves. We got to reset our thought process. We got to reset our mindset. We got to reset our speech. And we got to continue to allow God to use us tremendously. So once again, let's put our hands together. Those that are here and those online, send up some hearts and some lights, like likes on there. I saw one sister say, is that Brady? <laughs> and so we honor the Lord. Amen. All the comments are coming in. Um, thanking both the medals. Thank you for your due diligence, your obedience, and your faithfulness. Amen, for standing behind this sacred desk and allowing God to speak to and through to bless us on tonight. Amen. 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 Listen, before we close out and we're getting out on an early note on tonight, which is all good. Amen. So that we can all get home safe and those who are home can get prepared for your day on tomorrow. I want to just extend an invitation to each and every one of you on this coming Saturday at 12 noon we are in the month of february we know that february is black history month and also an observation of valentine's day and so our church is doing something that is entitled love thy neighbor and so we want to thank our very own uh, elder linda larue and her team that has put together the outreach ministry amen amen on this coming saturday at 12 noon we will be passing out to the community hat, gloves, and scarves, as well as free take-home COVID-19 test kits. That's right, free take-home COVID-19 test kits. I know many has put in a request for the government to, to receive theirs, but if you haven't gotten it yet, you can come by the church on this coming Saturday and get your free take-home COVID-19 test kits until yours come in the mail. Amen. And so do me a favor, spread that word in your community, on your job. It's open to all to be here at 12 noon. If you know families who can benefit from these gloves, these halves, and these scars, and their team, the outreach ministry, put together just for your family. And guess what? We're going to pray over them because we need to cover our children. We need to cover our community. We need to cover each and every one who participates in receiving these items. And so our leaders on Saturday, we're going to lay hands on these items and we're going to pray God's blessing and protection upon this variant, these diseases, sickness, colds, flu, measles, mumps, the list goes on, whatever. We're going to pray God's healing and protection over them on this coming Saturday. So please spread the word. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. It is first Sunday. Communion Sunday as we dine at the Lord's table, as we break bread for his body that is broken and his blood that is shed on Calvary. We continue to see Mother Ann on. Mother Ann, we're praying for you, and we're holding you up, and we're thinking about you and the entire family. And congratulations to the McDowell's on their new grandbaby. Amen. Healthy baby boy. We honor the Lord, and we'll let's continue to pray one for another. I love you. Jesus love is nothing you can do about it. Go in peace and remember the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good night.